Um, today's debate is a debate about our national priorities. It's a debate about the sort of country we want to be. It's a debate about fairness. It's a debate about the power of vested interests. It's a debate about courage or the lack of it in our Australian parliament. The history of this tax represents everything that is wrong with Australian uh, politics. Uh, the genesis of this tax, a tax that was proposed by the former Rudd government, is instructive and it's worth reflecting on that. The original mining super profits tax was a good one. It was an important reform. It was a reform that this country desperately needed. It would have raised billions of dollars, billions of dollars that could have invested in vital infrastructure, in critical health services, in funding our public education system. It was a fair tax. It was a tax based on the resources that are owned by each and every one of us. It was a tax that said, you are a beneficiary of the Australian wealth that lies beneath our feet, and as a beneficiary of that, you too must contribute to the great Australian story. It was fair and it was equitable. And yet what we saw was a concerted campaign from the mining industry. Terms like sovereign risk thrown around. Claims that the industry would move offshore if this reform was introduced. Nonsense, of course, because the mining industry in this country have it very good. We have a very stable political environment. We have an environment that is good for international investment, protections from the rule of law that don't exist in many other developing economies where mining is so important. The mining industry also have it very good because they have unprecedented access to the decision makers in this country. Every day, walking through the corridors in this place are lobbyists or representatives from those industries, from those rent seekers who seek to influence decision makers because they are pursuing their own interest ahead of the national interest. And so what we saw through this debate was not just lobbyists, but also members of staff and, in some cases, members of parliament doing the bidding of the industry. And in the face of threats of an advertising campaign against the legitimately elected government of the country, we saw our politicians go to water. Now it's very easy to simply look at this reform as though we were facing a contest that was inevitably going to result in a win to the mining industry. But this isn't just a story about the power of vested interests. It's also a story about the lack of political courage that now infects the Australian parliament where it's impossible to carry a reform that might impact on a particular industry or business group. We saw it through the reform on poker machines, where a modest reform that would have helped put food in young kids' mouths, that would have stopped relationships from being torn apart, that would have stopped people from losing their homes was defeated again by a very powerful lobby group. 
But that power only exists because we give it to them, because we capitulate, because we do not have the strength to stand up and say, no more, we are the democratically elected people of this place and we make the decisions, not you. And so what we saw was the death of a reform that would have guaranteed funding for vital infrastructure, funding for health services and funding for public education. And what do we see now, some time later? The minister responsible for oversight of that reform, now a paid-up mouthpiece of the petroleum industry, launching a broadside attack on the workers of this country a former member of the Labor Party claiming that the union movement has gone too far in protecting the rights and, and conditions of workers. No, this is a very, very sad day for the Australian parliament because we are reflecting on a reform that would have meant that people right around the country benefited from the wealth that belongs to each and every one of us. And what do we have in its place? We have a commission of audit that says we can no longer afford those things. And what we need to do in order to bring our debt down is to start cutting those things, cutting health care, cutting jobs in the public sector ensuring that the National Disability Insurance Scheme will be delayed. That is the consequence of the lack of courage that has been demonstrated right through this debate. And we're getting a confected story constructed through a set of terms of reference given to the commissioners who are charged with looking at the nation's finances. We are getting a confected story telling us that we need to make cuts because we're spending too much. The truth is very different. Government spending is under control. For two decades, Commonwealth spending has been stable. Far from being bloated and inefficient, our public service is one of the most efficient, one of the leanest government sectors anywhere in the world. Government spending as a proportion of GDP is lower than it has been in the nation's history and lower than it is in most countries that can be compared with ours. We're told that we're a high taxing country when, again, the opposite is true. Government revenues have fallen. We are one of the lowest taxing countries as a proportion of GDP anywhere in the world, and in fact we are being taxed far lower than we were under the previous Howard government. That is why this reform is so important, and that's why the original mining tax would have been such a magnificent reform for this country. It's important to note, Mr Acting Deputy President, that this is very much a debate about the sort of country that we want to be. Are we going to continue to allow big business to dictate the terms on which this parliament acts, or are we prepared to say that as the democratically elected representatives of the people of Australia, that it is we who will decide the priorities for this nation, the level of investment in services that the people of this country want, a decent health system, a decent education system, funding for vital infrastructure, or will we continue to allow these rent seekers to name the terms of the debate. Well, the Greens won't stand for it. We are here because we believe that society can afford and, in fact, 
has a right to adequately funded health care. Rather than cuts, we want to see investment in health. Rather than cuts, we want to see investment in education. Rather than stripping away protections for our environment, we want to see those protections strengthened. And rather than politicians caving into the big end of town time and time and time again, we need to take a stand. And there is no more important issue on which to take a stand than on ensuring that this country has the revenue to fund the things that all Australians want and deserve.